It is a series titled The Beast That Rises from the Abyss. The Beast That Rises from the Abyss. This is the eighth part. And perhaps the last, let's see if I have time to finish it. But, it is a series, in which you also have to search for the previous ones and everything is free, okay? Go to YouTube, our page, and there you will find all this. But, it is the moment. Saints of God, people of God, family of God, it is the moment in history, in which you must, perhaps if you had not done so, take God seriously. It's time to take God seriously. If you have been playing God or Christian and only come Sunday, during the week you don't even read the Bible, you have not witnessed to anyone, nor have you won souls for Christ. Yesterday you had a dinner, another dinner, or last week and you wasted it. Any of your friends, you didn't talk to them about Jesus, nor did you tell them, allow me to give you my testimony of what happened to me in my life, etc., etc. You have to take God seriously now. You will receive power. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, are you being a witness of what Christ did on the cross 2,000 years ago? If you are not a witness, before the people around you, your family, your friends, compatriots, the one who sells tortillas in your law firm, in your carpentry shop, in your plumbing workshop, in your clinic as a doctor, where you work as a nurse, if you do not bear witness to someone of what Jesus did on the cross. I doubt you are a Christian. As I just told you, take God seriously, many will tell me on that day, Lord, Lord, and I will tell them, I never knew you. I never knew you, but I was going to the church and to that, etc., etc. You know something? You never did what I told you to do. You were a religious person. But you never followed me. You never took Bible studies. You never got discipled. You did not like to listen on the road to the conferences, the Bible studies, etc., etc. And do you know something? That we have reached the end of the story. The Bible says that Israel will be converted, mainly Jerusalem. Zechariah 12 from 2 to 3. I don't see anyone writing it down, but I think you know it by heart that he swore that Jerusalem will become the heavy stone. That will be. The spark, Jerusalem. That starts the Third World War. The Bible says that Jerusalem will be the spark, the wick, for which there will be a Third World War. And there it will be around Jerusalem, in the Megiddo Valley where those who accompanied us to Israel a few weeks ago, it is an impressive plain. There the armies of the world will gather to destroy Israel, to seize the oil in the Middle East, because the Middle East is the bone of contention, where if Russia, China, and the United States want to control the world, they first have to control the Middle East. Because in three nations in the Middle East, there is 65% of the oil reserves of the entire world. So it is logical that it is the cake that everyone wants to eat. And it has already started. Because what just happened is not going to stop. And as of right now, this morning, a United States aircraft carrier is heading across the Mediterranean to Israel. This is going to burn, right? China is sure to take advantage of the opportunity to invade Taiwan. North Korea is going to take advantage of the opportunity to invade South Korea. Iran is going to try to bomb or send Hezbollah, the terrorist group, to destroy Israel, which it will never achieve. Because first, I am sure that Israel is going to bomb the centrifuges, where they produce the uranium-235, with which the atomic bomb is manufactured that are on the shore of the Persian Gulf and is under control in the area of Elam that the Bible mentions, that currently belongs to Iran. We are in a world already completely disjointed, where we must now seek God with all our hearts, and all of you who seek Him, 
who settle accounts with him, who ask for forgiveness from the one you have offended, that you repent of your sins, that you leave your adultery, that you leave your fornication, that you leave your pornography, it is the time to do it. Christ is coming for us very soon, perhaps right now in the morning, finishing the message, in a week, six months, we don't know. But millions of people who called themselves Christians are going to stay in the Great Tribulation. And they are going to suffer like you can't imagine. Open your Bibles in chapter 11 of the book of Revelation and chapter 17. I want to read two passages on which we have based most of the lectures in this series entitled The Beast That Rises from the Abyss. This series has had the purpose of determining, defining, investigating who the Antichrist is, the nature of the Antichrist. Will it be a computer? As they have speculated, others say it is Barack Obama. Francis, they say that perhaps he is the Antichrist. Prince Philip of Spain. Donald Trump's son-in-law, husband, of Ivanka, Donald Trump's daughter. They have done so many, they have chosen so many characters. That he is the Antichrist, that he is also Putin, etc., etc. And this series, that's why I tell you, it's there on YouTube. And it is a research that we began from the Genesis to see the entire history of the empires, etc., etc., Babylon, as a state here, there, which also contains geography, contains history, contains philosophy, it contains theology, it contains eschatology, it contains hermeneutics, it contains soteriology. It is a series that covers almost all the disciplines of theology, of history, and human geography, and also of the Bible. So, we need knowledge. We need to know how to inform ourselves and not just what you see on the news. Because 70% of the news is lies or is distorted. I quickly give you an example. Exactly like, well, a few months, three or four months ago. When the pandemic came, when the pandemic was already ending, President Joe Biden this is an example, goes to Saudi Arabia, because in the United States they were running out of oil, he goes to beg the sheikh. Mohammed Salman, who is the main man of Saudi Arabia, to please produce more oil. And the sheikh of Saudi Arabia answers him, we are not going to produce a single extra barrel. Well, eight months earlier, Biden called him an executioner and murderer. And now, he comes to tell him to please produce oil, because we are in big trouble. Then Biden asked Venezuela for oil, and so he went everywhere. So, comes about a month ago, and President Trump had frozen Iran's funds so that they would not continue producing the centrifuges of uranium-235 and wouldn't manage to develop the atomic bomb. Because Ayatollah Khomeini, leader of Iran, has repeated it, because in Iran it is not the secular president. Religion is what controls the Middle East, unlike the West. In the East it is religion, Religious leaders are more important than presidents. Except Israel, which is the only democracy in the Middle East. So, they started trying to investigate what was happening. And President Biden unfroze. Three weeks ago, six billion dollars in a prisoner exchange with Iran. by unfreezing the six billion that Trump had frozen. It is logical, right, that now Iran, who finances the Hezbollah group, which is in Lebanon, the Hamas group, 
which is the one that invaded, on Friday or Saturday morning in Israel yesterday. These terrorist groups are financed by Iran. And the moment their funds are unfrozen, well, they use them for what? To begin. To schedule attacks against Israel. Because Iran wants, with strong hatred, to take out the Jews and throw them into the Mediterranean. And then they asked Secretary of State Blinken three days ago, and Blinken said, This is in the news. I want to be a spokesperson for President Biden right now and tell the world that we do not have anything to do in this thing, etc., etc., and that the money that we unfroze to Iran is going to be used in humanitarian works. I mean, is it a joke? To what degree of madness and stupidity have human beings reached? I mean, not even Santa Claus would believe him. How can he possibly say that? Are they going to use it for humanitarian works? Yes. Well, look what they are. It hasn't even been three weeks. And just look what they're using the money for. To give thousands of thousands of thousands of weapons to the Hamas terrorist group. And as always, those who suffer are the poor Palestinian people. Because as always, right, it is the governments. Like in Iran. Iranian citizens are kind, right? And Christian churches are growing in Iran like you don't know. What is the problem? Government. In Palestine, there are many beautiful families. In Venezuela, there are many beautiful families. In Cuba, there are many beautiful families. Who are those who are bringing ruin to the people? It has always been that story. The French Revolution, the Mexican Revolution, has always been about the exploitation of the government to the people. So we have to understand what is happening, so as not to talk for the sake of talking. We have to have a clear, historical, geographical, and especially biblical background to know what we are talking about. In Revelation 11, verse 7, and in chapter 17 of Revelation also. Verse 8. We find the two main verses of this entire series. And always at the beginning of each lecture in this series, I almost always start with these verses for those who do not have an idea or the background that we are dealing with, so they can assimilate it. Otherwise, I cannot continue preaching, especially when you don't even bring the Bible. I have always said those who bring the Bible, we are leaving in the rapture. So in Revelation 11.7, it says like this, when they have finished their testimony, he is talking about the two witnesses who are going to arise during the time of the tribulation. The beast. That comes up from where? From hell? From Tartarus? Or from the abyss? Because the Bible mentions three prisons. That are found in the center of the earth. Not on Mars or Jupiter. In the center of the earth, there are three prisons. One of them is hell, wherein it are found the souls or human spirits, who in their life either rejected the message or because of their conscience, God, God is not going to condemn anyone to hell, etc., etc. But in hell there are no demons. There are only human spirits. In the abyss are the demons. Do you remember when Christ drove out the demons from the Gadarene? Well, you'll see later. What did they tell him? Do not send us to the abyss. Because it is the prison of demons. There are no human spirits in the abyss. And in the abyss, there are some satanic principalities. And in Tartarus, or in Abaddon, there are other satanic principalities waiting to be unleashed. Revelation 9, for World War II. Then, in Revelation 11.7, this mystery. The beast that rises out of the abyss will make war against them, will defeat them, and kill them. For a long time, people who read this associate the beast with the Antichrist. Follow me very carefully, and it is a serious mistake. Because the spirit of the Antichrist is not in the abyss. 
the spirit of the Antichrist, right, is going to be a human man like you and me. And the beast is going to be a satanic principality. That is going to enter the person of the Antichrist. That is going to provide him and give him supernatural powers, intelligence, satanic wisdom, a diabolical power. And so the Antichrist will be a mixture of a satanic principality and this satanic principality that is now in the abyss is going to leave when the Antichrist is born and perhaps when he turns 30 because he will perhaps imitate the age of Christ which is when Christ began the ministry the priests in the Old Testament began to be priests until they were 30 years old and perhaps he is going to do the same and he is going to enter the Antichrist and then the Antichrist goes immediately to turn to the Middle East or he is going to emerge from some Middle Eastern nation to sign a treaty with the Jews of seven years of peace which after three and a half years he is going to break so the beast is a satanic principality and the Bible shows us that from the first empires in history to the present day all the Roman Caesars Alexander the Great, Napoleon Bonaparte, Anibal, James Giscon, Stalin, Nikolai Lenin, Hitler, Benito Mussolini, and blah, blah. All the dictators, all the men who have been cruel, who have exploited people, who have killed people, who have treated themselves like Roman Caesars, who almost drank blood, who were homosexuals, who called themselves gods. All these rulers throughout history have been influenced. They have received an energy that was not natural of them, but by satanic principalities. We saw it in Daniel 10, when the principalities of Persia occupied the Persian Empire. The Persian Empire ended. The Greek Empire came with Alexander the Great, and a satanic principality came. That of Persia went to the abyss. That of Greece came upon Alexander the Great. For almost 11, 12 years, Alexander the Great was conquering. Alexander the Great dies, the principality leaves, enters the abyss, and any of those principalities. That Assyria had, Egypt had, Medo-Persia, Greece, or Rome had, is going to be the one who is going to enter the Antichrist. As we know. Let's go to Revelation 17. And let us see the clarity of the Bible, so that he who has ears may hear. And this food is for the mature, who have grown up in the Word of God and who have not wasted time reading other superficial things of life. Revelation 17 verse 8. In this chapter 17, the great harlot, Babylon, is described, which is currently between the nation of Iraq and the nation of Syria. When you see in the Bible Babylon, which begins in chapter 10 of Genesis, with the first human rebel Nimrod, it is talking about the geographical area between Syria and Iraq. In other words, Syria and Iraq were not divided. In the Old Testament, they were united until the 20th century. When they divided the Middle East from the English with the League of Nations, after the before, shortly before and at the end of World War II. So John is writing, during, whose empire? What empire was in the time of Christ? Roman, right? Let's see again. First there was Assyrians and Egyptians. Then came the Medos and the Persians, which is Iran. Persia, in the Old Testament, is Iran. Then came the Greeks, and in fifth place, Rome. So when John was writing this, the beast did not exist. It was in the abyss. See what it says. The beast that you have seen was was 
When John writes this, he is saying this beast belongs to the past and is not is not currently exercising any power in the world and is about to rise from the abyss. So there is a satanic principality kept in the abyss that when the Antichrist is born and perhaps reaches 30 years old will enter him to endow him, influence him, energize him with diabolical powers to be able to lead the world to a totalitarian government, arbitrary, politically, economically, religiously, to a globalism led by a single man. Listen, in the last century, the world was not yet at the level to be governed by a single person. But with the technology of the 21st century, for the first time in history, the world can be run by one man. Until we had reached the level of technology we currently have, one man could control the world, and that man, the Bible calls him the Antichrist, who most likely was already born. Perhaps it's next to your house. Very well. Once we see this, we have to understand the invisible spiritual world of evil, because everyone is under the influence of the evil one. 1 John 5.19 Upon Christ's arrival in the world, he initiated a war and commenced a conflict against spiritual beings referred to as daemon, which were later interpreted as demons and these ethereal entities, resided within individuals and, in certain cases, drove them to commit suicide To others they gave supernatural strength. To a woman they hunched her head for 15 years. The hump she had was a spirit that that lady had. They made others blind, others they took away. Their speech, they made them either stutterers or mute, etc., etc. And Christ begins to confront these creatures. To reveal to us, it is the first thing that Christ did when he came into the world to begin to show us that human beings can be influenced by these spiritual entities. And since the world does not understand the behavior of human beings, especially when psychology was discovered with Sigmund Freud at the beginning of the last century, because a person who had multiple personality disorders, Don Pancho wears one face in the morning. He wears another face at work and he has another face at church. That is, Don Pancho has three masks. He behaves in one way at home, in another way with his friends, and in another way among Christians. Among Christians, he seems like Saint Selmo. This is called in psychology, multiple personality disorders, but also they call it schizophrenia because there is no other way to determine the irregular behavior of a human being behaving in a different way. Another person, for example, is very scared, Mrs. Carmelita, and she locks herself in her house and gets into the truck and thinks that everyone is watching her, etc., and they described her as paranoia. Doña Carmelita is paranoid, the psychologist or psychiatrist tells her, your problem is that you are afraid of all people, paranoia, without knowing that there may be the possibility that there are spirits working inside Carmelita and Don Pancho as well. Another attitude that is prevailing right now in the world, those who were behind the pandemic, are called psychopaths. Sociopaths. Completely sick people. Who believe that by eliminating thousands of people or millions of people in the world, we will survive. Because there is no more meat, no more rice, no more chicken, no more corn, etc., etc. Grain production has decreased by more than 50% in the world, so we are going to eliminate it, and the solution is that the fewer the people, the longer we'll live. And they have invented microbial pandemics, and they are going to continue doing so because they believe in their psychopathy, in their madness, in their lack of reasoning, 
logic, and elementary principles. Of common sense what the solution is. What did Hitler believe? Another psychopath. No, the problem is the Jews. If we eliminate the Jews, hey, if we had returned to 1943, 44, hey Adolf, the Jews don't have weapons, they don't have a house, they don't have money. Your enemy is Russia, England, the United States and Canada, Adolf, for God's sake. Why do you forget? About Russia, sorry, about Japan, about Italy, about Germany, which are really yours, and you deal with the real enemies that are England, the United States and Russia at that time, and you turn to an ethnic group, and you create a total solution. He orders the construction of a number of ovens and crematoriums, because he got it into his head that they are to blame for how the world lives. What is this called? A psychopath. The Bible has another name, demon possessed. From head to toe. And the Gadarene was Pinocchio compared to Hitler. Benito Mussolini, the same in Italy, Hitler's friend who established fascism, died hanging and the people almost killed him. Well, they finished him off hanging by the head there in the square of Florence, Benito Mussolini. And so all these men have had crazy ideas. Psychopaths. Alexander the Great dies at the age of 33 in Iraq, in ancient Babylon. And he says, let's go now. The generals, the four generals, into which the Roman Empire was divided, told him, Alexander, we are already tired. Let's go home. There to Greece. We have been fighting for almost 12, 13 years. Look, everyone is already bloodied, wounded, etc., etc. And he was obsessed. So they convinced him. And they stay in Babylon. And there he starts smoking hashish, weed, who knows how much, from the Emerald Triangle. He becomes homosexual, he begins to have. Homosexual tours. And they get together five against five, ten against five, etc., etc. And he dies at the age of 36, completely drugged. He gets malaria. He gets marsh fever. He gets all the diseases. And before dying, he says to the generals, I no longer have worlds to conquer. His completely psychopathic obsession was to conquer the entire world. Obsessed with power and ambition which are the same characteristics. Of all rulers in history, there are exceptions. In the fingers of one hand. Let's go quickly to John chapter 12, verse 31. Gospel of John. And see the words of Christ from his mouth. About. In whose hands the world is. John 12, 31. Jesus says now is the judgment of this world. Now, the prince of this world will be cast out. Chapter 14, verse 30 of John also. I will not speak much with you anymore because the prince of this world is coming and has nothing in me. Jesus was referring to the fact that when he came to earth, the world was controlled by an energy, there are all the demon-possessed. And the most demon-possessed were not found in the brothels, neither in the bordellos, nor in the discos of that time. The sickest people in the time of Christ were in religious places, in the synagogues. There the demons jumped at him, the places that are considered most respectable. And maybe, how is it possible? The prostitutes, it's the drug addicts, the religious. Christ called them in John 8:44. You are children of your father the devil. You wish to fulfill your father's desires, as he has been a murderer from the start and doesn't abide in truth. For when he lies, he speaks his own falsehood. Then we see that to Christ, this Satan, appears once. Matthew chapter 4, and Satan takes him to a mountain and says to Jesus, you see all this, 
and he showed him, let's say, New York, Las Vegas. All the beauty, the gold, the silver, all the glories of the world. And Satan says to Jesus, look, you saw it? Yes, I offer all this to you. If you kneel and you adore me. Christ did not ignore that Satan had that power. He knew that he had power over the entire world and that he could offer it to those who he wanted to offer it. And since then, Satan has done the same with all human beings. With Christ, he could not truly, because he was the Son of God and defeated him. I remember when I began to see examples quickly of artists, athletes, politicians, rulers, singers, that the devil has offered them the same thing, that they have accepted it, and that the devil has destroyed their lives. Michael Jackson. I remember when he started, black, dark, with his brothers, the Jacksons, with his sister, etc., etc., and he got the idea that he had to change his skin to a white color. Then time passed, and it occurred to him that he no longer liked women, and he began homosexuality. And then the king of pop dies even though they already knew it, and the whole thing comes out, he liked children. He was a pedophile. And he took them to his farm in the United States to have relationships with children of 10, 8, 10, 11, 12 years old. It was like United Kingdom. He had Ferris wheels there in his house, in a garden. It was like a park in his house. And the parents, oh yes, Michael Jackson invited them to a sleepover. And then everything came out to the light. Satan came to collect the bill because he made him the king of pop and he was the idol of thousands of young people. Elvis Presley, the king, another king of rock and roll, had girls waiting outside his house in Tennessee, in Memphis. 300 women waiting to sleep with Elvis Presley. And inside his house, Elvis Presley, tired of so much fame and so many things, begins with drug addiction. Rex Humbert comes, a Pentecostal preacher, who begins to preach to Elvis Presley because Elvis Presley's mother was a Baptist and she loved him very much and he reminds him that he had foundations from the Bible. And when Elvis Presley is found dead and they find him in his bathroom with the Bible in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 where the story of the rapture of the church is, he falls face first into the bathroom his daughter picks him up at two in the morning, and that's how the king of rock and roll died. He had already divorced his wife years before because his wife found him having relations with the head of his personal guard. He had also become homosexual. The devil came and collected the bill. And we can say singers, athletes, governors who are here and remember power does not last. The devil comes and collects the bill. Sooner or later, the higher a man rises without God, the higher man falls from because we are not gods. Fame, women, and money. This is what the former champion diver who was our disciple, Joaquin Capilla, said in 1952, the first Mexican to win the gold medal in the Olympics in 52 by diving. And Joaquin told us, fame, women, and money. Fame, money, women and pride or money are the cause of the ruin of all human beings in the end those who come to power either because of women or drugs or pride right or cause of fame and publicity they believe they are gods whitney houston whitney houston i mean the other singer right now do you know celine dion who knows celine dion do you hear only mariachis or what? Celine, Dion is a French girl. There has not been a voice. There has not been a voice. More beautiful than Celine Dion. It had a unique quality that went up do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, si, do, almost do, and then down and up. And she managed her voice up here like Bocelli sang many times. Search online for Bocelli and Celine Dion, written as you hear it, both singing, 
and imagine listening to two angels. The woman is also beautiful. My wife and I went to see her one day at a center in the United States. She sang songs like that for the family, that is, regular songs. And she was married to a man who was about 15 years older than her. She had two children with him. He dies. And Celine Dion goes loose. Right now, she is about 60 years old with an incurable disease. Unknown. That has taken away her voice. And she is looking everywhere asking for help. Who? What doctor? What clinic? What hospital could cure her? Fame, man, is like the grass of the field. The grass grows. The flower comes out, and in the afternoon it withers. This is the glory of the human being. Do not believe in the applause, in fame and popularity. Those who worship you on Sunday are going to crucify you on Friday. Do not. Trust the human being because you have abilities. Or because you have talents. Because they do not last in life. Let's go now and see some examples about these possessions. In the chapter of Matthew, chapter 17, and see the performance of these beings that Christ calls demons. Matthew chapter 17 says, See what revelation the Bible gives us. Verses 14 to 18. When they arrived at the crowd, Matthew 17, 14, a man came to him and knelt down in front of him saying, Lord, have mercy on me, on my son who is a lunatic, lunatic, and suffers greatly. That is, my son is half crazy because many times he falls into the fire and many in the water. And I have brought him to other disciples, but they have not been able to heal him. Jesus responded, O oh, unbelieving and perverse generation, how long must I be with you? How long must I endure you? Bring me here. And Jesus rebuked the demon, which came out from the boy, and he was healed from that hour. Here there is a spiritual entity, an intelligent spiritual creature. The word demon means being intelligent that enters human beings, in this case, a boy, and they perceive him as crazy because for no reason he'd jump into fire or my daughter tried to end her life last night or she wanted to leap out the window or enter the sea, etc., etc. Instincts we could call suicidal tendencies and of course, a person who has suicidal tendencies is not in his five senses. He is a person who has felt cornered in the world, where he does not see any window, where everything is black, I am not seen, I'm never going to get married, no one is going to pay attention to me, I'm not going to prosper, I did this or that. My only solution is to leave this world, and they don't know that they are going to a worse world. What does psychology call it? Paranoid. Schizophrenic, psychopath, sociopath, psychotic, etc., etc., etc. 2,000 years ago, Christ showed us the problem of human beings. Well, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 18. In the Old Testament. And see why God, from the first family he wanted to form, the people of Israel, They are going to enter the land of Canaan, a geographical area full of spiritualists, of witches, of pedophiles, of people who expelled their children to Moloch. It was an idol with a stone pot with boiling oil. And there they threw the children because the priests of Moloch told the people, when you throw your child in, you are pleasing the god Moloch. Let us not be surprised, because from 1973 to the present day, there have been more than 60 million abortions in the world. 
It is the new Moloch. The god Moloch returned to the new society, to the current society in which we are living. So don't think it was like, oh, poor little children, what they are doing right now with newborn children is worse, or to those whom they have not even allowed to be born. Look at God's warning. From Deuteronomy 18 verse 10, let no one be found in you. Who makes his son pass through the fire, there it is. Nor one who practices divination. Or soothsayer, the doomsayers are the astrologers. A Christian cannot practice astrology. What sign are you? Virgo. I'm a Gemini, we don't get along. Is more stupidity possible in human beings? Let's consult the horoscopes. Who put the horoscopes there in the Excelsior, in the newspaper, in Reforma, etc., etc.? Today's horoscope advises Virgos to stay home. Mom, today I'm staying home because my horoscope says not to go out. And we think we're smart. Astrology is one thing. Astronomy is another thing. Do not confuse gymnastics with magnesia. For the love of God. No wonder your godfather was Walter Mercado. Neither a spellologist, nor a sorcerer, nor a charmer, nor a fortune teller, nor one who consults the dead, is called spiritualism. Meetings held by many people. And this is very common in the upper middle class to the rich. Who gather in houses, invite a spiritualist. They gather around, hold hands, and the medium, that's what they call it. So Mrs. Fuller says to the medium, Please communicate if you can with my husband, or with the spirit of Quatamoc, or with whatever spirit, and they all hold on. They begin to hold on to each other's hands. Many times they begin to tremble and suddenly, suddenly, they hear a voice. A literal voice is heard in many occasions that says, I am your father. And I want to tell you this. And I want to tell you that. Here and there. And supposedly, they communicate with the spirit that they are invoking. And it is not that spirit. It is a spirit of demons. They are demons that usurp and speak and imitate. And they knew the person you wanted to invoke. And we believe that we can have communication with the beyond. And that beyond is not of God. It is the terrain prohibited by the Bible, called occultism and witchcraft. And you are treading on the ground of the enemy of God. And you are attracting very big curses on your life. Because no one can leave. Without having been hurt or injured when one dabbles in. The hands, reading the hands, reading the Turkish coffee, the crystal ball, all of this belongs. To the world of occultism that is prohibited by God. It is real. Voodoo from Haiti, grabbing a doll and stucking pins in it. Well, I come to tell you, to please kill my husband because he has a lover. What is your husband's name? Carlos. We are going to take this little doll, and we are going to name it Carlos. We are going to put pins in it. Carlos, we give you over to the curse, and many times it happens. Because it is real. The occult world is as real as the spiritual world, because it is spiritual. And the devil has powers, and demons have powers. But we are not children of darkness. We are children of light. And when Christ came, the Holy Spirit came into your life to open our eyes to reality and the invisible world that surrounds us. The fact that a saint has blood coming out of his eyes does not mean a miracle. A miracle. This is a miracle from God. Not all miracles are from God. Satan can also make a statue have blood come out of its eyes for the love of God. Or you find a boat attached to a tree with the image of the Virgin. None of that. It doesn't even look like the one that sells tomatoes in the market. But that's how people are. They attribute any supernatural thing to God. And it is not always from God. And it is what is called discernment. Knowing how to distinguish what is from God and what is from Satan. This, it's a warning, it says in verse 12, is an abomination to Jehovah. God hates when any person who gets involved in witchcraft, occultism, astrology, 
who goes looking for tarot cards to have them read for you, or who joins some sect or secret society, etc., etc., in the desire to search. We are curious by nature. I want to know what is going to happen, etc., etc. You are treading on Satan's land. You want to know what will happen, come to the Bible and God tells you that you have eternal life when you die, if you accept his son Jesus Christ. Now, in the penultimate place we see that then the spirit of the beast will emerge from the abyss, while there will be a number of false miracles in the world before Jesus Christ returns. And these false miracles, the greatest of all is unidentified flying objects. They began to appear mostly from 1946, Jacques Vallée, the greatest. It's not Mossan, okay, for God's sake. Who presented two aliens who were found in Peru and they were two mummified children. Well, you see all types of things in this life, right? Jacques Vallée is a serious investigator of integrity professional in UFO research. Write it down, Jacques Vallée, you can find it anywhere. And he said, I have had more than 25 years studying this phenomenon, and the only thing I can say is the following, the Pentagon hired him. Scotland Yard hired him in the United States, even the House of Russia, two times they investigated him so that he could provide information about unidentified flying objects. And he says in one of his books, this is nothing more than a demonic activity. It is not possible that there is or that any person can make an object that violates Mach 3 or 4, which is the speed of sound, and that we, commercial pilots, can testify that it exists, the phenomenon exists. Of course, there are many fakes, but there are testimonies even from astronauts. I was friends with James Irwin. James Irwin in the 80s who was the eighth person to walk on the moon. He came to Mexico, and they chose me to be his interpreter. I was already beginning to speak English at that time. And we went to UNAM. We went to the Polytechnic. We went to churches. We went to a number of places. We visited about 10, 15 places in two weeks. And I had the opportunity to pick him up at the hotel, have breakfast with him, and well, I was curious, right? What's the moon like? Et cetera, et cetera. And he returned to the earth. Jim Arwin. Back to the earth he converted to Christ when he saw that the earth was circular. Remember, it is not flat. Stop smoking the thing you smoke already. When I saw the circumference of the earth and when I saw a lunar eclipse that clearly demonstrates that the earth is round and that it is not flat, I was converted and said this cannot be anything other than the work of God. And he was the one who gave testimony. Says Armando, I saw while driving an FDT-16. At that time, they were some FDT-35. I saw an object that passed in front of me when I was doing tests to go to the moon, which I am sure was an identified flying object. And yet we know that they exist. But the reality is the following. We do believe in this phenomenon. But the difference is that we know who is behind this phenomenon. They are satanic materializations of energy. Satan in Exodus 7 grabs a rod from the sorcerers. Moses's rod becomes a snake, the sorcerer's rod. It is thrown down and they become snakes too. Satan has the power to make that little table right now turn into a dog. He can make this pulpit begin to levitate. He can make the windows of your house close. It can make you hear noises. It can inject thoughts into you, kill yourself, take your life. There is no solution. You are nothing. It can make chain noises on the roof of your house. It has the ability to twist energy, cause you problems at night, incubus succubus, cause sexual experiences while you are asleep. 
it seems that you are really with a man or a woman, and it is a demon who is doing all those things. He has power in the sexual organs, in the vocal cords, in the retinas of the eyes, in the ears. He can enter the neurons of the demon's brain, disconnect you. Because there is still a connection here in the brain, one neuron from another, and cause you madness, or cause neurosthenia, etc., etc. The power of Satan is described in the Bible, and Christians still do not know what Satan is capable of in your life. When you believe that apart from him you can triumph, or you can have protection, when Jesus Christ said apart from me, you will be able to do nothing. And finally, let's go to Isaiah chapter 10 and see that the Antichrist is going to emerge from the area of Iraq and Syria because for a long time it was debated that he was going to leave Europe because in Daniel 9.27 it says that the prince that is to come the people that is going to come against that people that was Rome many people assume that the Antichrist is Roman however we forget that the ancient Roman Empire is not only Europe. The ancient Roman Empire was made up of Europe, North Africa, and Middle Eastern nations. And the Bible is very clear as to what area the Antichrist is going to emerge from. The Antichrist is going to emerge from one of the four divisions of the Greek Empire. When Alexander dies, the empire falls apart, divided into Egypt, into Syria, into Turkey, and into Macedonia are the four divisions of the Greek Empire. And in Daniel chapter 8, which I believe we have not finished, it will be the next time we are going to finish this series. In chapter 8, we see that it's currently Syria, or Iraq, the geographical area from which the Antichrist emerges. And it is not a coincidence because from the beginning of humanity, where did the tower of what begin? What's Babel? Iraq. What is that area called? The land of Shinar. When you see in the Bible, the land of Shinar is Iraq, Syria. When you see the area of the Chaldeans, it is Iraq, Syria. When you see Bologna, it is Iraq, Syria. Those are the same names synonymous with the geographical area where Iraq and Syria are located now. And where is the problem today? In the Middle East. Well, but let's look at it with the Bible. Isaiah 10 verse 5. Pay close attention. Oh, Assyria. Assyria is Iraq, Syria of the modern century. Rod and staff of fury. In his hand, I have set my wrath. I have set my wrath. I will command him against a treacherous nation and against the people of my wrath, which is Israel. And I will send him to take away the spoils, to snatch the prey, and to lay him down to be trampled like a wolf in the streets. Verse 12, close attention. But it will come to pass that later, after the Lord has finished all his work on Mount Zion in Jerusalem, he will punish the fruit of the pride of the heart of the king from Assyria. God has not finished his work with Jerusalem and will not finish his work with Jerusalem until the time of the tribulation. Because the seven years of tribulation, the Satan week of Daniel, is to bring Israel to repent. Because they continue blaspheming and saying that Jesus is not the Messiah. And in the tribulation, they will recognize that Jesus Christ really is the Messiah. When this is over, God is going to punish the king of Assyria, who is the Antichrist. We are going to see the final touches of this series in the next conference. Tune in, look for it, because it is going to be very interesting. We will see why it is not going to leave the tribe of, as they said in Genesis 49, from a tribe of Israel, and it is not going to emerge from Rome but the Antichrist arises from the Middle East area. 
And there in the Middle East, along the Euphrates River, are the four most powerful principalities of Satan. Revelation 9, the fifth trumpet that will kill. A third of human beings. Everything that is the Middle East right now is the most demonized area in the entire world. Because there, the emergence of the next world dictator is already being prepared. But you are already prepared to receive, perhaps, this afternoon, the king of the universe. To the one who opened his arms from across 2,000 years ago and ask him to enter your heart and forgive you your sins. Are you willing to repent this afternoon and say, The Lord, forgive me? I no longer want to continue in the life I am living. I no longer want to continue treating my wife badly. I don't want to continue fornicating in my courtship. I no longer want to continue in adultery. I no longer want to continue stealing. I no longer want to continue defrauding people. I no longer want to continue deceiving anyone. I want nothing more than to follow you and know you, the Lord. Forgive me. Forgive me, God. Tell him. Come into my life and help me. Be the person you want me to be. Let's bow our heads. There from another place, you who watch us on television. Perhaps you are watching this conference from a room in a hospital, a school, a church, or at home. Wherever you are, bow your head and say, My Lord and my God, I ask your forgiveness for my life. I believe that on the cross you paid with your blood for my sins. That you offered your life in exchange for my sins, for my evils, so that I would not have to go to hell when I die. I believe that after three days, you rose from the dead. And that is why I ask you at this moment to come into my life as my Lord and my Savior. Give me the strength that I don't have, Jesus, the power that I don't have, to leave in my life what you don't like. That's why I invite you to give me that power, to enter into my life, to change myself. I want to live for you, the short life that I have left, to know you and understand that you are God, all-powerful, that you opened your arms on the cross, to accept me, just as I am a sinner, in the name of Jesus. Amen.